Hi friends, I'm Olga Kirch and welcome back to my studio. Today we're gonna paint a transparent anemone in very, very loose style, in very intuitive manner without any drafts and have a lot of fun during painting this. I hope you will like it, so let's start. To paint an anemone flower, I, in transparent technique, I'm glazing the area of the front petal as and as we're painting without any sketch, very intuitive. I just imagine how the petal, the shape of the petal could be. And then I create very diluted, very diluted ultramarine blue color. You could take any blue from from your palette, any fa any your favorite color. I I like ultramarine blue. It's very intense, and it has a very nice graduation from very light to very dark. For example, if I add just a little bit of color from immediately from the palette, you see how intense it is, and this is very nice for us for uh, for painting the transparent technique because that's how we could emphasize the edges. I go with the tip of the brush along the edges and let um, the darker, the darker color just flow into, into the petal. Sometimes with another clean brush, I just help a little bit um, and smooth some areas. I would like to add more experiments here. I would like to add some different shades of uh, blue. This one is um, cobalt blue. I play a little bit. To create this texture, you need to have half dump brush with some watercolor on it, with some medium on it, and um, just create this. Um, if you like this uh, style, if you like to paint in this style, let's uh, paint another petal. I will take a little bit different shade. I will take a purple one and. I imagine that my other petal will go a little bit down, a little bit aside. There will be an intersection of petals. <clears throat> Sorry. And I allow colors from one petal fly into the colors uh, of another petal. I want to add some some contrast with ultramarine blue and uh, the most dark part should be the sen uh, the point where all petals connects and connect to to the stem so the m your main field of application of bold colors should be exactly in this point there is something special with blue colors. Maybe they remind of of sky or water or sea. I don't know, but it's um, I so much like how all blue colors just just play with it with each other. Ideally. I would recommend you to stop right here and let these two petals dry before we switch to another to another step. After I check and see that there is dry or almost dry, I'm painting another petal. I'm um, my water in my water already has a blue hint. That's why it's very convenient to paint the petals now and uh, as I could see a little bit the shape, which is very helpful and it's very good for our technique. 
because uh, all these overlaps of colors they create they create this feeling of transparency so in principle for this petal no need to add some extra color into the petal but for having fun i would like to use for example what it is it's some purple so some purple color and i just go along the edges of the petal a little bit more darker in the bottom bottom area and very very soft on these petals it's very handy to have two brushes to work one is clean and just for distributing colors for making some oops slight corrections that should not be a problem because you see i'm correcting right right here right with you and if something like this happens when you are painting especially if you're painting in this uh, loose manner in this intuitive manner it, it's really um always accidents they could bring just interesting moments to your painting um my paper it's is a little bit thin for this technique i dry my brush and you see here is a little bit of puddle i just pick up all the extra water from it and dry my brush with paper towel what i would like to do is add some more texture just like this it's um, kind of reminiscent of anemone and let's see where it will lead us i uh, i'm letting this area to dry a little bit and i would like to paint something on the side um i have a feeling that as as it's a huge experiment and fun, I would like to use just all blue colors from my palette. And let's see what, let's see what we will get from there. I'm pretty sure you can't do anything wrong when you use beautiful blue colors when you're painting. So I emphasize a little bit the edges and um, this uh, middle part of the flower um, and combine with other shades, for example with purple. Uh, purple gives this mysterious touch. I like these um, spiders when uh, one color um, uh, move a little bit the other and it creates these nice fluffy spots and i think for this technique it's very very beautiful i will make it a little bit closer so you could see the details i distribute a little bit this big color puddle into the petal into the petal i do not like this sharp line here so i go with some tipping moves and uh, what else could i do i i could add some texture also with tipping moves or as we did it before just go with with the brush so if you were before hesitant to play with this technique with these splash to create these splashes i think it's just the right time to try it out um, again I, I already have some some pretty lovely mix on my plate on my palette and 
I'm going to paint another petal. When you paint uh, your petals, keep your brush around the middle or on the um, top of the brush to make your moves a little bit random, a little bit less predicted. And this is really, really adds to this abstract feeling, to this creativity feeling. Now it's time to divide the petals, emphasize the edges. Mm. I would like to take um, take this ultramarine blue again. Yes, that's my favorite blue color. I like them all, but I think ultramarine blue is my favorite. I, I think I could easily paint uh, flowers just with these blue flowers. Just like this, to get more transparent feeling we need we will need later on to emphasize just this area to divide the petals but right now it's a little bit too wet so i'm taking my big helper which is called <laughs> hair dryer and uh, I, I i will so <laughs> my helper done its job um and now also you need to be careful when you dry when you use hair dry sometimes it could leave these mm, weird areas in our case that doesn't matter because we wanted to paint something abstract something very creative so i paint this line then i wash my brush I dry my brush, it's almost dry with paper towel, and I go along the edge with these wiggly moves because I want to soften this edge a little bit and to make it more interesting. Now I add a little bit of purple. Again, I wash my brush, I dry my brush with paper towel, and go a little bit more soften and soften and soften the edges and for example here um, the color went a little bit aside and that's completely fine that's uh, that's the beauty of the technique um, it's very abstract uh, it's not frightening if you will do something wrong if uh, watercolor will play something different as you plan that's totally fine what I do not like is this um, um, sharp area of, uh, it was apparently, it was a puddle which dried here. Not very beautiful what I'm going to do. I wash my brush and I'm going to paint here another petal. Just on the top and a little bit around. Even you see when I'm just glazing them, paper it's already um, getting softer i would strongly recommend you to get a little bit thicker watercolor paper for this uh, right here i think it's 180 grams which i feel was not the best choice for this tutorial um, uh, but i have what i have I would definitely recommend you to take 300 grams uh, watercolor paper, ideally cotton, but that's mm, not really big, uh, so, so much necessary, just um, a little bit thicker than 180, 180 I told. Okay, um, what else I could do? I, get some white space on my paper towel. I just blot a little bit the area to make it nicer. And what always, always, always helps is this splashing, splashing around. 
So in principle, in principle, we are done. Um, right now I will add some greenery and a stem and maybe later on a few more details and petals. For the green color, I would like to use some very dusty green. It was uh, emerald green and I mixed it with uh, burnt sienna. You could use any of um, brown, darker brown colors to make the green, the green a little bit um, dusty, a little bit more elegant. Animals, they have a lot of uh, 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 complicated greenery around this area and uh, usually it looks like a stem. Let's paint first the stem. Always nice to add some curve. Don't, uh, try not to paint stems, even it is on the picture, even it's on your reference, it's clearly straight. Try to add some curves to your painting. And some greenery. I paint sometimes with the belly of the brush, sometimes with the tip of the brush. Mm. Absolutely not um, trying to follow the reference. I, my goal here is to create some move and some reminiscent of the greenery. So everybody who looks at the picture knows that's the greenery and that might be an animal. <laughs> animal. And if you are not sure that people recognize animal, you could always present your picture and, uh, and call it uh, blue anemone, for example, and then no questions will be asked even more. Mm. I want to, as I told, this um, connection point should be the darkest one, so I'm just emphasizing a little bit it with extra greenery. Very careful, not trying not to overdo it. Um, another moment, blue color. I make a small little puddle here um, because animals, uh, they have very, very thick, very recognizable pestle and pollens around. So what I'm doing now, I'm emulating this. Hmm, maybe I painted something, it looks like a hedgehog. Um, it's also it's a nice tip to try out to take the uh, wooden tooth um, stick and go a little bit just distribute the um, color from from this puddle to the petals. It's very gentle, but it brings a feeling of uh, vines, very gentle vines. Um, it's very difficult to do it with um, with a brush, but with um, this tool stick, it's quite fun. And I I like our flower very much. You could always um, add some mm, some division between the petals very gentle no, that's not gentle <laughs> uh, a little bit more even more gentle just like this for example and that brings a very nice division between the petals but that would be lovely to do before we made all, all these things. I'm sorry for confusing you guys. As, as you see, I do not have a big plan in my head when I'm painting. And that's what I would like to teach you while painting watercolors. Just follow the flow. 
Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I do hope you have fun and you got uh, the idea that painting watercolor flowers, transparent flowers could be very easy, very relaxing. Don't be afraid of mistakes or some mishappenings. I encourage you to try it out and leave some feedback in comments which flower, transparent flower, you would like to paint next. See you next time. Bye-bye.